Lu, Lu, look his face. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's dangerous. He's special. We can, like, the guy is special. Yeah. Everything that could possibly yeah. be special yeah. about this guy is special. A guy like this is the type of guy that you love to watch and follow the most special guy that I've ever come across. Hello and welcome back to the Petter McCoury Sports Show presented by Headrush. Today we are not joined by a fighter. However, we are joined by someone very special. The UFC translator and interpreter Fabiano Busque. How are you, man? Everything all right, except for that Patriots hat. What's going on? <laughs> I are we that gonna? On purpose because of our conversation. I knew, the other day. I knew, I knew. I just wanted to go for the, uh, for the look. You know, just a black t-shirt as so many have seen it before. But you yeah. know what? Uh, go birds, go. baby. There Forty-one to thirty-three is eternal. Yeah. See, you can hold that on over me forever. So. Yeah, yeah. Believe me, and I. Uh, that uh, the memory from before in Jacksonville um, had haunted me for quite some time. <laughs> I have a uh, major beef with Brady yeah. back from my college day. So for me to actually have that moment, it was very special. So, very um, yes. Sure. Yeah. And then plus, you know, we can we have one thing? You had six things. Can we yeah. have? <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank of you. That's, that's it. All right. So. I want to ask you what originally drew you to language. Obviously, I believe you grew up in Brazil, but you speak English, German, Portuguese, Spanish, everything. So what originally drew you to language? So, okay, as far as the, so I'll back it up a bit. Um, I did learn German a, a very, like a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of praktischer. If you don't yeah. have any practice, you know, we have a Deutsche fünf Jahre gelernt. Yeah. But, this was a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away because I go back to when the Patriots didn't have any Super Bowl. So I'm older than you. So, you know, um, have a story to tell about that. But I was I grew up in Brazil, in Curitiba, Brazil, a place that so many people know because of shooter box and, you know, so many fighters have trained there or from there. And um, obviously Portuguese, my native language. Yeah. And... Um, I came to the United States. I fell in love with football, actually. As an American football has been a thing. And yeah. I do believe that is a, um, as far as language is concerned, it's a very hostile environment for you to not speak English or not even to attempt to understand terminology. I, I think you become, a, um, uh, in your own right, you become a more informed fan if you learn uh, English at least to go through all the technicalities of football yeah. and you can't be superficial because it's so deep so you end up and I, I and i liked it i realized i could emulate sounds that i could that i was good at you know the voice stuff so okay so that it drew me in you know i guess american culture in general at that time um cool so that was english i came to the united states as an exchange student in southwestern new york south of buffalo north of pennsylvania Ended up going to Penn State for four years. Yeah. So that's where my beef for Brady comes from. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, sent, you sent me all the voice messages the other night. Yeah, I, I had to. I had just to tell you that there's context. It's not yeah. just there's method in my madness. Okay? So, yes, it is. It was my last college game. It was my, my last Penn State game. I worked for the stadium, worked for the team, I worked for ESPN. And I, I just cherished the moment watched it from every corner of the stadium my last game there and it was tom brady leading a comeback uh yeah. with michigan so i i i've i've watched drew, drew Brees live twice when i was in college so i mean I, yes getting old um get it right i'm always gonna say get it um then the four years of penn state and then i had an opportunity to work for disney because okay. um the Walt Disney Company has a very good relationship with Penn State and Penn State. I, I, I come from communications. I come from public relations. But I was always fascinated by the hotel industry. I thought there was a, a, a hospitality industry in general because I, I like the world of travel. Uh, most of us Brazilians, that we understand like the, the concept of tourism. Like it, it does fascinate our country to, yeah. to a large extent. So it's an industry that I've always looked up to in the sense that oh, well, you get to travel, at least you get to be involved in travel. Eventually you get to travel. You have, you can work all over the world and you're not bound to, it's not, you don't have a, to go through like a, you know, pass the bar 
yeah. some country to work at a resort somewhere on a cruise or for an airline. So I thought that is just a, a way to open my horizons and then the languages and the cultures and the countries. Um, working for Disney, you, you translate. I was always the person that had people in different yeah. um, tables, like people that didn't speak the same language. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was always doing that so you thing going back. Man? Yes, very much so. I've been a middleman in my life for like quite some time, even like in business. Like I, I was when I realized one day I was like, yeah, this is the the pinnacle of being a middleman. I worked in procurement, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh my god, it's me again doing this. Um, but I used to be in tables of you know people that were tourists or people that were coming into town, and I always tried to make sure that I would like to connect people. And I thought I, you get good at it with practice, right? You start at least you. Start, you start to understand what you need to do, how fast paced you need to be, if you have the ability even better. And I always liked the nuances of languages. I liked, con- I liked context. I think that's one of the cool things about translating. And I, I really like context. Um, by that, I mean to translate something exactly the way a person in another language would, you know, another, from another country, another culture would speak in another language and how they would say it. You know, it's not verbatim. Yeah. So I was doing that. Uh, I worked for the Walt Disney Company for quite some time in Orlando. I was a cast member for many years. Orlando is a second home to me and forever will be. Um, that's where I was actually before Vegas too. So I went home after uh, about Spanish, right? So Spanish. I was a member of the Puerto Rican Student Association in college. I learned it from them. I fell in love with the island. My friends were all from there. Yeah. That's where the partying happened. That's just, the, I mean, they basically, I remember we went for a spring break to Puerto Rico and we got there. Like, they were contingent. They, they, I, people, like, they said, how do you know so many people? All the Disney people that were from Puerto Rico matters. Yeah. All the Penn State people, we were meeting in the airports. I was in, back in the, I went, went from New York. And, like, we, were, we went to the airport. There were three flights full of people from Penn State. We all knew each other. So yeah. we got to bars in Puerto Rico. Everybody was from Penn State. And everybody, there's the Disney people. They're like, how do you know many more people than I do? And they're from Puerto Rico. It's like, it just happens. I mean, I just, it, so um, I spoke like a Puerto Rican. I actually spoke Spanish just like a Puerto Rican. I talked like one, uh, like accent and everything else. And when um, the end of my stay in the United States uh, through a student visa and through op- op- optional practical training, so when that ended, I went to Brazil. And went back to Brazil too, with obviously thinking about coming back, right? And then 9-11 happened three months later. Mm. Yeah. So um, to put it in a football context, I watched a season that led to the Patriots' first Super Bowl. Yeah. It was in I, it was in Brazil. I watched it and I had to like scramble to find a hotel. Fun story. I was in I was by that time I was working for General Motors because I did training and development for Disney. Uh, a lot of facilitation, a lot of public speaking, mm-hmm. a lot of, again, techniques. Like, it, it's amazing what you learn, right? You yeah. actually, Disney is a haven for facilitation. And then I worked for this company full of very smart people that really had facilitation techniques down. The fact that you're when you're in the table, especially in Brazil, everybody people like to talk and continue to chit chat while you're doing training. Like, the fact that when someone is talking and the person that's talking, when you're interacting with people in a, ta- in a, in a, conference room all those round tables right if a person starts talking start pedaling back to be as far away from the person as possible in that room to make that person enunciate and speak up yeah. and to draw all the attention from the inside from all the the entire room to that conversation because they can't hide it so and we get just it's a lot of stuff that i learned from these guys and um i was already traveling and doing training and development in Brazil. And here I am at a hotel. And I realized it was, it's a very Brazil thing, very early 2000s. This hotel that I went to is a small town, right? Um, I was going to work there from Monday to, to, to Sunday, to, to, to Friday. And the hotel, half of the hotel, it had a different structure. Half of the hotel had one cable operator. Half of the hotel had the other cable operator in town because of the wiring. One cable operating, well, operator did not have what was FX because it was a, actually a, a Fox that was there. Yeah. Uh, it, it depends. Like sometimes, you know, a, a Super Bowl that's on Fox would be on ESPN for, for many years. Like it's just a different thing down there. Yeah. But Fox was showing it that year. 
and in Brazil, like uh, the, the the Fox Channel. Yeah. And it wasn't I, I that, if I'm not mistaken, that's what it was. Obviously, it was on Fox here in the United States. But anyway, the channel itself, I don't remember if it was ESPN or not. It didn't have it. I had to ask to switch rooms in order to watch that championship. So, um, so that's the kind of life I had traveling around Brazil. And then because of the Spanish, which was a competitive advantage, I got a job later with DuPont uh, doing um, with one of the company doing training and development and um, and sales and in, uh, in uh, uh, behavioral based safety for industries. So I got to go through Hispanic South America, so from Argentina all the way to Venezuela. So you get that as, and then I came back here because the product that I was selling was from Canada for an American company. We had to come back to the United States. And then I already went that trip. I went to Disney. I went to the Hall of Fame in, a, in, 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 a, in, uh, in Canton. And then I went to a Penn State Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. And let's just say that after that, I came back. I was like, yep, I need to come back to America. Yeah. So I made that kind of a point. And I kind of looked for something and I came back to work for Disney in 2012. Yeah. Again, like 35 years old. I just looked for a program. Someone someone had to pull out of a program. They said, we can put you in. And my best friend, my best friend, um, actually, he offered me an opportunity to become him. He's a trilingual as well. His boss wanted somebody does the same profile, got sponsored to come to the United States. Um, we both work really well with languages. We work, you know, with, with relationship and development. And he said, I, I, I want, it's time for me to step up in the company. So we need somebody like you. And I think you're perfect. So Orlando for five years. And then I ended up in Vegas. So the languages were always there. German, I learned it when I was a teenager. I made a, an executive decision that would haunt me 20 something years later because I could be in Paris now because there was a choice between French and, and German. And German. And, and I, just, I just thought for the purpose of business and for the purpose of what Germany was becoming, I, I really enjoyed the idea of of um and especially the the, the u.s base the, the u.s the, the american english base yeah and um it speaks to point of how, how methods and teaching are very important and these people are so important in our lives um i had a i, I will learn from a method called deutsche für ausländer yeah. that in 30 days you learn 300 words yeah. down pat like the and with 300 words, you can speak a language. And I swear to God that I was speaking German in 30 something days. And it was obviously I was a sponge and it practice has not happened. And I'm, I'm half Italian. So I have two citizenships. So the Italian is a lack of practice as well, because obviously you have to be in an environment. But uh, I've, I'm happy to report that all the Italians that I've known have been very complimentary and said no you speak italian stop but again we have to be very humble with languages you never you're never perfect you can always learn there are accents there there are dialects comes to italy dialects dialects it's just insane in germany here there's a lot of dialects and stuff where i I live so i live near frankfurt that kind of area so the hessish mm -hmm. the hessish dialect sometimes like sometimes you'll encounter a strong one and sometimes they're really, really difficult if you haven't grown up around it. It, it, it it's a it's a different language, even though yeah. they. I mean, I, I know that there's like sometimes they, they, I know there's a difference between an accent, a dialect, and a language. But I mean, it just they they blur. The line is blur. Yeah. And you and you're in a continent in an area. There's so many cultures, just kind of they're there, and they. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at um, is it Strasbourg? That's the that, that's in the border with France. Yeah, it's right on the border. Yeah. It, it like and I I remember back when I was at Disney and actually in school, uh, some people are from there. So they're like, okay, are you? I mean, they were were they French? Were they German? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they the cultures blend. Um, to put it into perspective, if you think about Brazil, Brazil is a I call it a, almost like an administrative error, right? I mean, instead, like, instead of being all these nations, I mean, obviously, it's great. there's two approaches. There's all of South America. There's a bunch of countries, and then Brazil. There's a bunch of states. There are so many differences between the states, like the borders and things of yeah. the sort. But at the end of the day, it is one language and that we don't get to the dialects. But I've always been fascinated by languages. I think it's a sign of respect. I think it's a sign of trying to connect with people. Um, 
it, when you're in public relations and when you're in, in a in hospitality industry, when you are dealing with, you know, the psychology of talking to somebody, it's about, you know, the emulating gestures and, 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 and you know, doing the same things and getting to the same cadence and tone. You just try to approach. You're just trying to build a connection. And what better connection than language? I mean, when you go to a place and you make the effort to understand, and it's fascinating. Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't the coolest thing when you come to a conclusion that for the first time you um, understand an inside joke of another language? Yeah. You're like, oh my God, it's like a, a little I made it moment. Yeah. For right? Sure. I, yeah. I, so. I have a job here. I work at a sports store here. And okay. it's really cool. And like, so I did German for years in school. And I was like, you know, I would speak it like a second language, like a, yeah. it was like an international school. But then mm-hmm. as soon as I started working, I worked in a restaurant. And now I work in a sports store. My German just kicked off to another level. And so my understanding is completely different. And like and the teachers that th- would tell me my German wasn't great. Now I've lived here for 11 years and my German, I, I say it's near fluent, but I know there's definitely things that I don't understand. Because there's that, that, there's that, 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 that last thing. Yes. Yeah. And then, there, and there's a point that it, unless, and I, I, I say this because of English, uh, I'm proud to say that I've worked in communications that I've actually went, I've had the privilege. That's what it is. A privilege of having a love a family, education, resources, um, it ties into the fact that I consider it to be a, a privilege and a pleasure to be able to use my skills to help fighters whose fights started way before the octagon yeah. and will endure and last long after them. Yeah. And for me to be able to use what the privilege that I had to help them out, and it, whether it's to build a connection, one connection between one fighter and one fan or one fan with one fighter in one brief moment, if I was able to convey a message, a moment, a, I mean, if and even enhance their opportunities in the future for people to understand whatever it is, everything is a brand. Everyone is a brand now. Why not? I mean, yeah. that, that's the cool thing. But unless you work in the language and work specifically, there's levels of work. Like, for example, you're doing like, and it's cool because it relates to sports. Yeah. Is there anything better to understand a culture than sports, than, than you being able to talk sports? Like if you are able to sit down and talk Bundesliga with some like yeah. locals and with the jokes, with the, that is the best. And yeah. I just, I, I'm fascinated. And sports just bring us together in that sense because, you know, sometimes music people, of course, if you're in the same concert or in the same venue or something, like that, but Music does like it kind of at the end of the day, like you're a Patriots and I'm an Eagles, but it, yeah. we can sit down and watch the damn games and it's going to be the coolest thing. Yeah, it's, oh, it'll be great. Yeah. Sure. And we just did. I mean, that's it's, it's, it's football. It's, it's amazing. Like, if yeah. I mean, the World Cup is coming up, it's going to be great. We, I mean, we get rag on each other, but it's just, and then music is a different thing, man, because at the end of the day, I can be hating on a team, but we're watching the games. Yeah. Nice and if you're talking about music, it's like, so the EDM people don't want to deal with rock. Rock, sometimes they don't want to deal with hip-hop. Hip-hop doesn't want to deal with countries. Like, it's like it's a whole thing. Some people like, said so they like to be called eclectic. Yes. But it's just, I think sports are great. And plus, it's the ultimate unscripted art. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's unscripted. So, um, but the, the, to your point of like working with languages, when you write, it's one beast. When you have to understand, is another beast. When you have to... Um, do customer service yeah. and, and be in hospitality and uh, it, you know solve issues and and uh, sell in another language yeah. you're upping the ante and it's like okay you're getting more knowledge so that's the level of proficiency i think of. that's why i consider myself to be like fully fluent in english yeah i'm native in english i'm very fluent in spanish and there's that's where i lack on other things that i've had in the past and i think that you have to find a passion you have to find a passion. Um, how did you end up in Germany? So my dad, my dad's work moved us over here. A lot of people think yeah. it's military, but it wasn't military. But then yeah. we, he works in air traffic control, the aviation industry. Of course, of course, yes. So Deutsche Flugsicherung, that kind of area. So we moved over here. Um, and it's been 11 years. So I was born in Scotland. Yep. And then lived there for six years, then moved over here. 
and we've been here for 11 years in the same kind of area as well. So I've been around the same kind of, um, how would you say, like culture in Germany for most of my time here. And I've noticed yeah. like since I started working and stuff, like I used to, when I used to speak German to people in the street, it would be like, you know, I have to translate it in my head and then yes. think about yeah. it. But now I, when I go to work and stuff, I can almost like switch into a German brain. And like that's I'm that's a, in German, and it's the best. It it is, and 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 when you realize you are not translating, which then brings us to another point. When you get used to it, because then a lot of people say, "Oh, but I speak the, the language. Oh, I've lived somewhere else." And then you have to re retune and fine tune something, and turn on another switch mm. that almost takes you back to when you were translating, and deeper into the language, which you now are translating what's happening you yeah. stop doing that as a fluent german speaker yeah you stop unless you have buddies coming over you have family you have other people when you're doing the train it you stop translating when you're fluent yeah. so you have to think back and like how am i so the cool part is that i've had that opportunity throughout so many different jobs and i've always liked to do it that i've never stopped i consume content in all the languages possible um and i did that exercise on my own many times i think all of us have taught to ourselves in some capacity i i I've, i learned a lot of english by talking to myself and i it just you know i just decided to make my thoughts in english when i was and i went i just immersed like yeah. if i'm i don't know like uh have you have you ever watched gomorra the italian show from no, sky all right okay so you do something like that you watch that thing and then you're 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 napoletano for 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 the length of that that show you're just like consuming all the interviews you're consuming the the artists the actors and actresses, the 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 music you're consuming napoli you're like oh my god and you can do it and i i've always, I've always believed in immersion you know, do that 90 day immersion or like do something like go for the first one of the shock and my experience was the germ because I never thought that that was that this, something can be so effective as far as learning is concerned. Yeah. Uh, learning uh, that bit of German at, at 15 years old taught me a lot of lessons about how to um, get any content and cram it. Yeah. But again, it teaches you a lesson in lack of practice because I have not even spoken. It's going to be 20 years more now sorry yes 30 so um i had a great experience i mean and always when i go back to translating i have always have to give the shout out to derek Kronik, who the i mean he's been was the, the the translator guy for the ufc for such a long time yeah. never had the opportunity to meet him uh very happy to to know that one day actually he commented to someone in in, in the promotion that i was doing a good job Vuna was kind of starting so he's you're good which is good um I'll always thank him for that and hopefully I'll meet him someday. And then there's Alex Davis, who's done this for such a long time too, as a, yeah. as a manager coach. Uh, and Alex uh, was telling me just now, I was having a conversation. He's, um, he learned it a long time ago. So he learned German a long time ago. And I mean, we're older people here, right? Mm -hmm. And he just went, he finally went because he had to do something over there, fighting related and just continued. Yeah, and I think he went to a, to one of the London events, and then he just continued, and he went to see the fam. Uh, apparently, the family has something related to a castle, so he went to see it, and he said that within a couple of days it came back to him. Yeah, and this is I'm Patrick. This is talking about like thirty years or so. So I'm fascinated by the opportunity. That's one of the things that I I'll become an American citizen next year. I'm applying this year in a couple of days. Actually, actually tomorrow. I'm applying for citizenship okay. tomorrow. Yeah, uh, uh, you can apply for citizenship when you have, uh, in my case, uh, five years after the date of the green card. And the green card is September 3rd, yeah. 2017. So tomorrow yeah. is the big day. Um, awesome. So I, I send it out and it's going to be whatever, how long the USCIS takes to yeah. process. But I've always thought, so what are you doing in the future? Like, what do you do? People ask, what do you do next, right? I always thought, why not live in Europe when I'm older? Like, I, 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 I just think I, it's like when you can, when you can take advantage of it. But um, it, 
And you know what? MMA, specifically the UFC, gives us an opportunity to watch a true global and individual intense situation. Yeah. So it, it really fit well with who I am and what I like to do. Yeah. Right? And so um what did were you an MMA fan before you yeah. started working for the UFC? So what was that call like? Who called you and, and was like, Hey, we've got this job for you? Right. So it was uh from being there, obviously, I mean we can't deny that except for like Muay Thai, which I mean people try to call it kickboxing, but we know exactly what it means. It's it's yeah. the ultimate thing, like you know, in, in, in Portuguese it's called Thai box Thailandis, uh, kickbox, yeah. but 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 it's it, it it's associated with a by, by name with a country, which is yeah. amazing. And I love kickboxing. Um and the fact that Jiu Jitsu became BJJ tells you tells you a lot, right? That that it, it, it you know a country was able to actually strive so so much and reach the the highest heights of this, and then that the sport actually was honored with it with this with the with the reference to the country. Um, the UFC has been huge in Brazil for the longest of times, and obviously, some from someone from being from Curitiba, we've had the lights of Vanderlei Silva, we've had Shogun there, we've had uh, Anderson Silva like fighting out of there. Um, so many athletes, and it's a culture. It depending again, talking about the fact that certain certain countries have different cultures and certain different sports. Like uh, as much as I would say, you would see a lot of volleyball in Italy and not as much in Germany yeah. you would see MMA in, in our in our part of the country a lot like Curitiba became a thing yeah. um, it is if you could Sao Paulo is huge Sao Paulo is huge you know yeah. biggest city in Latin America Rio is the capital of the whole thing in Brazil I'm very happy that the, that the UFC is going to Rio to go are, back are you I mean, go that, to the- probably not because Derek actually lives there probably okay. because because he lives there but I did tell the promoter I did tell the person that that is my contact. I do have a couple of contacts there with the people that I, you know, handle my, yeah. I mean, they all have my phone. They all text me, but the, the people that I, I try to streamline things, um, it's my man, senior producer there for events. I said, just do me one favor. If it goes to Curitiba, okay, mm-hmm. I know exactly the stadium that's going to be in, and it's my team stadium. Yeah, It's two blocks away from my mom's apartment where I used to live. It's, it will be an honor, a privilege, a pleasure, and everything else. And consider me there. Yeah. Consider me. Forget that I'm here. You forget flights. You forget hotels, logistics. I am there. I am your local in that city. Please give me that honor. Yeah. As much as I think of Orlando. And I actually put myself as seller. I'll be in Orlando. I'll be in Orlando. There's one Brazilian fighter that just please let me in. So, yeah. so, I'll be I'll be there. Don't, don't worry about it. And actually, I just found out that some of the Brazilian fighters are. I mean, first of all, they're trying to. You, uh, I'm not sure how where you are the new of how um, the next couple of months are going to be. But obviously, as everybody's talking about with that, we've talked about New York, and of course, we know that we are going to have two probably two Vegas event, Vegas events by the end of the year, right? Yeah. Two seventy nine coming up, and then that one in on December tenth would be right. Yeah. Uh, but December third. So I mean, I I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, disclosing any any uh, information. What I know is that the UFC is trying to go to Orlando on December 3rd, which would be great because there's no Thanksgiving, uh, you know, no UFC on Thanksgiving. Uh, my friends were all there. I love to spend uh, Thanksgiving there. I work for a remote job, so I go there. I will, already, I will already be in town for a couple of weeks. And, I mean, think of the beauty of this. Nothing beats Thanksgiving weekend as far as football is concerned. Even like the, the, the two weeks of Thanksgiving is just great because there's so much football. The World Cup starts on the 21st. We're going to have the United States play England on Thanksgiving morning. Awesome. And, and then we get to see the Cowboys lose again on Thanksgiving. <laughs> a tradition that, that's like the any other. Right? That the is the high. Lose. I mean, you think about a past couple of years that there was that great game against the Bills that. We're talking, whoa, whoa, yeah. beautiful. And the Raiders game last year, which was what? Like the highest rated game of the season. There were 40 million people that watched it. So um, the, the MMA thing, the, 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 uh, the main thing is that it, the, it's an individual sport with so many personalities. 
and the USC has done a very good job. We all we all watch the blueprint of things, right? Everybody's now I'm not saying everybody, but the the, the ratings for Formula One doubled in the United States after fifty something years of trying to, to get this done. Why? Because of Drive to Survive, yeah. because people people just identify themselves with the personalities. Well, what le- that led to apparently Netflix trying to close the same deal for golf, tennis, surfing, or something else. So they're going to try to do the same thing. That's awesome. Well, where does that come from? That comes from the Ultimate Fighter. Oh, okay. That's where it comes from. Safe, and then I, I yeah, exactly. And I, I love those 30 for 30 documentaries when Bill Simmons made them when he has ESPN. I love them all. I watch them all. I love sports documentaries. I think it was just a blessing that we had those, those things. It tells a story from different angles that we never thought we could watch. Uh, you might not be a tennis fan, but all of a sudden it shows, uh, I think it was Everett against never to love Like it shows the, the, the rivalry. Why not? Great show. Um, and then, um, it th- they made one uh, uh, Tito and Chuck, yeah, which was amazing because they, they, it, it's the the story, the history of the UFC is ingrained in in many. They did they go back in the timeline, so they kind of go back and forth and back and just like the Last Dance, which was amazing. So it shows that you're like, oh my god, personalities. Yeah. Let's masquerade this. Let's camouflage it as a, as a, you know you have you guys have a problem with beating people up. Well, hold on, it's a reality show. And they're the personalities. They're the people. All right. And along came a pandemic. So this is how I got it. Because of the fact that I've done all this, and a lot of people have known me from it, um, one of the things that I did when I met a lot of people in Brazil back in the, now, like 2009, 2010, I was doing a lot of workshops specifically for products. Some of them were, it came because of a company that I was working for. It was for DuPont. And I was doing the guru of the product, the creator was like always American or like spoke English in some capacity. So in this case, it was a Canadian. It would be sometimes an American European would come. And I thought, why not do it? And I just, you have to take it from everywhere. You have to, you, you watch a thing, you're like, maybe I like this. Well, this could be applied to something else. And I always, like Brazil has a bunch of like religious channels and then a network television. Like yeah. late at night, you're like fl- flipping through channels to find something. And all of a sudden, like all of that network TV is that. And like, they, sh- they showed all these like televangelists and pastors doing it and the Brazilian pastor will be there. And obviously the, I know that the Brazilian guy didn't speak English, but he had the script and the other guy was here. Yeah. And this guy was like vivid, like, you know, just like all intense. The Brazilian guy would be just as intense, but it worked. And I was like, Oh, this, this dynamic works. And I thought about the same thing for corporate. I was like, why don't we do this? I'm product manager for this. I understand the entire thing. Let's go through the script. Let's do a couple of trial runs. And when we do it, we don't have to, it's not even about pain, but I don't want people to sit down. Uh, simultaneous translation has a very, very, there's a function in society. It's, it's necessary. Yeah. But as far as the aspect of a show is concerned, as far as the, you know, for presentation and for engagement, simultaneous translation, it, it, you're, you're making a choice. Yeah. You're making a choice to pay attention to the joke and the Oscars, or you're making it, you're, or you're listening into Brazilian television doing a simultaneous translation. Yeah. So if we could combine and be dynamic and be quick, it won't take twice the time. It will take 1.6 times the time. And I did that. So people knew. They knew that was in Vegas. And someone that said, works more closely with the UFC, she's like, I know you've done this in the past. I know you work with sports. And they're approaching like every pretty much every Brazilian that has something to do with the promotion. saying like, listen, we need to find a local guy. You're in Vegas. You're, you're alone there. You're working a remote job. They probably wouldn't have a problem. How comfortable would you feel trying to, if you know, send me a resume? So I sent a resume to her. So I'll forward it over. I'm not kidding you. Within 24 hours, I'm getting a specific email from someone that's mentioned even in the broadcast. So the reason why I don't mention, you know, through or an interview or something, some names of these people is because I don't know if they would like to be mentioned. These yeah. are people that work as executives and, you know, and I do respect that. I mean, to mention the the love from, from, uh, uh, Megan Olivi and from uh, from John Anna and Kakshi mentioning my name and then Cormier and Laura Sanko during uh, um, the Contender yeah. Series. I mean, the the cool interactions I've had with Bisping, that's another story. These are front-facing people and just are 
stories to tell, right? But I try to respect as much as possible yeah. and they know who they are. And I would love to to mention them all by name, the people that work backstage. But I, I you know, I just don't feel comfortable just saying all. Yeah. No, but no. yeah, it was it's someone that's mentioned in the broadcast, um in, in the production sense. And I mean he just some people would love to be able to have access to them and just basically send me an email and said, would you like to try us all the experience with languages? I think we need somebody, especially with a, a, a Portuguese and I see that you speak Spanish. And they asked me for, in a, oh, in about a week, we're going to have uh, a fight here. Would you like to come in? And it was uh, Munoz at Edgar, August 22nd, 2020. Yeah. And that was my first time. And I saw, I've seen the apex grow. Yeah. Don't want to say it as a baby. That's a little too poetic. But I mean, think of yourself as a fight fan watching and watching this thing that now is happening while others are not. And then um, they, it's safe because you, it's a limited amount of people. I'm not talking about 11 players against 11 players, less teams. Everybody was well covered. Everybody was tested. So I test in the morning. I obviously woke up at 4 o'clock all nervous, nervous as hell. Spend, the, spend two weeks watching Derek Tran. Yeah. Pretty much. That's what happened. Spent two weeks watching him translate. Um, watched how the how he works, uh, how he positioned himself in the in the uh, in the octagon, and how he spoke. I mean, how how that. I mean, I try to even get some tips from people. I was like, okay, so um, where would you? I mean, who would you look to, right? And they said, well, Derek, just please look at how how see how Derek uh, does things. So I looked at it. I saw some some of Alan's papers. I saw Tiago as well manages. So I saw all the translators. I saw all the translators in other languages, and I was like, okay. So at four o'clock in the morning, I wake up all nervous because I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm like, I can't believe it. I'm going to do this. Okay, so let's go. So I I test and the testing for me open at seven o'clock in the morning. Same day testing. I'm there at six fifty nine. Test yeah. and they say you're going to a room and you're going to get a text when you're clear. From yeah. seven a.m to 2 p.m. I'm in the room and just watch. I mean, I spend a week trying to look at it, you know, look over terminology, making sure I could translate this, this, and that. What can I do? What can... So, because it's a different thing to pay attention to things. And then, you know, you're going to be the responsible for conveying the message and the terminology. I mean, I just thought of like the corner work. And I was like, when I get, if it gets technical, how do I react to that? So, you know, knowing your chokes, Knowing your strikes, knowing um, knowing terminology was very important. So I did that, and I show up, and it was all remote. It was all it was remote within the within the confines of the apex. So like the fighters will go around the broadcast team and, and be in a room where now is the room for contender series where Laura interviews people. So that's the room. So that's where they had like a it looked like um, in soccer when they end up in. Yeah, and that at no, the you know when the the interviews end and they go to the oh, to the yes. interviews. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 just yeah. with the back. So they put the UFC logo there, and then they exactly that was it. And then they would not know that sometimes that the translator was here because they had the earphones talking yeah. to the bracket. And there was seen and there was a screen. They actually put a screen in front of uh, of the fighters and they could see it. Um, but then they didn't know about the translator. So I thought I had an idea. So I was like, hey, give me two pieces of paper. Give me a Sharpie. And I'm going to put in Portuguese, do you need translation? Mm -hmm. And the second one was, the translator is on the headphones. They actually, I don't know, if, I, mean, I can't remember if they laminated or if they put it there, they flipped it. So I was like, just put it here, show it to them. And just, I mean, communication is right there. If they say yes or no, if they need translation, go to the next one and I say the translation is in your ear and do this and they will know. And it became fluid. So you just try to improve processes. You're coming from a different world. You come from the corporate world. So, and uh, that's how I ended up doing it. Mm. Uh, it was uh, obviously made my mistakes, uh, made my, I mean, get nervous. You yeah. And you get comfortable like anything in life, you get comfortable. And I got, I got more comfortable and more comfortable. And my first time, because then we weren't going to the octagon, um, a couple of weeks before Glendale, a couple of weeks before the sign of the Tory 2, Figueiredo the Moreno 2, they um, said that, I mean, they asked me if I wanted to travel domestically, which I thought was great. And 
we were supposed to go into the octagon. And I did a couple of times. I mean, a couple of times the Brazilian fighters lost in the end or just they lost um, or it was a decision. It's, it happened twice. Like that I went up, I think I went up with Felder and yeah. the, the Brazilian fighter didn't, didn't win. So I just basically kind of saw myself out. Yeah. And uh, there was some loss in the, in the early, I think early prelims or prelims in the, in the card in, the, in Glendale. And then the first time I get into the octagon is when Moreno B. Figueredo with the rear naked choke right yeah. in front of me. I felt, first of all, I felt like I was in Mexico. It was an amazing atmosphere. First Mexican fighter to actually win um, a championship. And then belts his. And here I am. I go to, they said they were going to interview the loser of this fight as well. And I go up. And it's just at one point, I'm like in the octagon for the first time with Dana White and uh, and Joe Rogan. And it's just the three of us in the back. And I'm like, okay, act like you've been there before, right? So just kind of like they were looking at each other. And they, I mean, they, they were, Dana's always got a smile on his face. And yeah. uh, Joe's focused because he's listening to things. Uh, Dana doesn't he doesn't have the thing. So he's, he's doing his own thing. And then Joe's just listening, probably production's talking to him. Right? Okay, go ahead. Um, but I'm uh, Joe's focused, like he's got the microphone, and then Dana's there. I just kind of looked at him, and Dana said, oh, Man, the first Mexican fighter, look at this. And he's like, I know, like, so that was a pretty cool moment. <laughs> um, and I got to, is it what? hard? Is it hard for you to like not be biased for a Brazilian fighter, you know, because you want to do your job, or are you just watching as a fight fan? Watching as a fight fan because I think and I think it goes back to certain things that have happened. Like, uh, for example, I watched Brazil win a World Cup in '94, yeah. and then in 2002, which was pretty amazing. Um, I have tuned myself out completely as a fan. Um, completely, I watched all. But first of all, I haven't missed a World Cup game since. And there's gonna give you my age. I have not missed a World Cup game, and I'm talking all 64 mm. since 1990. Wow. Because I had to miss a couple in 1986 because I was young. I was eight. Yeah. But from that other year, 1990, summer, uh, winter in Brazil, just didn't miss any of the games in Italy. Yeah. Uh, I do not miss games. I don't care who's playing. I just think it's an amazing thing. Um, admittedly, I cannot stand, uh, because of American sports, I cannot, I, I cannot stand 138th of a championship. And by that, I mean I do not watch... Unless it's a, okay, so let's just say that towards the end of the Bundesliga, we get a major Munich Dortmund match. I'll watch that. Yeah. Do not ask me for the other 37. I, I can't. I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a, you can't watch the season. No, no, I'm an American sports fan. I have that's what I am, first and foremost. I'm a college football fan and an NFL fan. You're telling me 11 to 12 games, you lose once and your chances of going to the playoffs are slim. In the NFL, I remember all Eagles combos. I remember a bunch of games that don't relate to my team because I follow 32 of them. And I remember the home and home. I remember one time that I don't, the, it's like the Broncos and the Chargers back. But, I mean, they were, one team was three games back, and they lost the last three games. The other one, the last three games, is just like it's crazy. I mean, remember, I don't know, remember, remember how Tebow regular season is. I don't care, but it all relates to a playoff, and they're memorable. It's just like the Champions League. I am so jaded that we'll, I will watch the group stage in the last game if there's a do or die, put up or shirt up, now or never situation, yeah. and. I, I'll try to get two screens going if because sometimes I mean the champions like it's just something that just there's some there's there's something to something. it even like the other there's just the, the Champions League it's just like the Premier League it's the, it, there's something to it there's something very special but there's something so special about the Champions League that it, the the stuff that's been happening in the past couple of years and I'm not by no stretch of imagination a Real Madrid fan but. Uh, I will back up Vinicius Jr., but most of the first of all, Benzema, right? Yeah. The, the stuff that we saw in the past couple of years, even what Real Madrid has given us in the past couple, decade, is what the Patriots gave us. The fact that the Patriots, and I'll tell you straight up, 
Tom Brady himself never dominated a Super Bowl. Never. That that yeah, team you never. Loads of voice messages. Of I that. I know, but like the main thing, when when was the biggest domination? Because he had one of the best defenses in the history of the NFL, and the and the and I mean, I'm sorry, he wasn't playing defense defense when when Mahomes was not doing well in that Super Bowl. But the Patriots won one Super Bowl by three points, the other Super Bowl by three points, the other Super Bowl by three points, another one by four points. In the last second, the Falcons booed that game. The, I've got the Seahawks poster behind me. I know. Why not? And of course. I mean, and is it a great moment? I had Skittles at the bar in Orlando. I had Skittles. I, I ripped one pack open already. I was like, he's going to go in. And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, and I'll tell you what. Well, you know, football football teaches you a lesson. It's never over. It's a couple of possessions. You, it's never over. You can do especially with the Patriots because there's a, there's a method to the man. All right. When I saw 28 to, was it 12? Uh, it was, I I think it was 12. It got to 12. Oh, yes. Like, oh, when it got to 12, yes. I was like, not looking good because I've seen it. I've yeah, seen it. Seen 2010. It. I, I was back in the day, I was more into social media to the point that I like, was in Facebook and stuff. I, I mean, deleted my entire history because I wouldn't, I didn't post anything on social media for 10 years. But I remember that I was with my girlfriend at the time and we're watching. And she's like, You are crazy. She's like, You are crazy. She watched me witness the 35, the, the, 34, the, the third, the, no, the, no, the, uh, not the Super Bowl, the, uh, when the Eagles beat, it was 31 to 10 with like eight minutes ago, and the Eagles were losing to the Giants. It was the miracle, the miracle of the Middle Lands, oh, too. Yeah. Remember that? And I was over, I was I was putting stuff on Facebook, but then I was like, I think we're just a couple of possessions away. No wonder. It's, I've always believed because I've seen things. The more yeah. you see things, you're like, shit, it can happen. And then you look at the beauty of MMA. What we witnessed in Salt Lake City. Yeah. That was a 4-1 fight right yeah roughly Easily. so how can you not you know it's just of course some of the brazilian fighters are pretty fun and of course it's just uh i mean i get to get airtime and i get to work and i get to do stuff but it's like and i and i they'll keep inviting me if they keep winning but some of the storylines are quite amazing i mean it's it is a coincidence now that we have a charles we have Davidson. I mean, but if you think about it, the 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 Davidson Moreno dynamic has been great. Oh, it's been amazing. I think we have something brewing in Alex Pereira. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a warrior here. Okay. Um, and I, I was there for Glover Yee, which was yeah. a modern day warrior against the boss of a video game. Yeah. Because that's what Yuri Bokovka looks like. Yeah. Um, it was like the last guy you need to beat in order to beat the game. And, I mean, he – what a fight. He was winning 3-2, yeah. I'm going to say, right? And then I compare it to – the closest thing that I can compare to is uh, Sergio Ramos' header against uh, against Atletico de Madrid. Yeah. Um, so, crazy. Crazy. Uh, I mean, tw- was it 28 seconds ago? So it was, it was insane. Know, it, was like, it was about 30 or less seconds. And he tapped. It's insane. And also, it's, it's insane. He didn't knock him out. He submitted Glover. Oh, that, was the, that was the craziest part of it. Like, if he had knocked him out, I would be like, okay, yeah. it's Yuri Prohaska. But a submission, like, just caught me off guard completely. But I'll, I'll tell you, there's something that's, that's very important. I, I love the team. I love the commentary. I love the insights that I get to. I mean, I get to sit next to Gene Thomas. And as just we always talk about how well things are going and I'm as humble as possible to ask him questions is like, listen, in my this is in my view. Tell me if I'm correct. Okay. So um how interesting it was that I mean if you watch the broadcast again, I think Cormier was there. Yeah. And yeah, was I think it was Cormier, Cormier Anik and Feld Bisping. Yeah. Bisping. Bisping okay. Yes. And um um Cormier was there. And, and he, I'm going to say it was for me. Uh, sometimes you forget on certain things, but I do remember, I think it was him. And I thought it was really cool what he did because he said, oh, they, I think they said no, no, something like that. Yeah. when uh, And they follow. The yes. When he went for the get And then he actually said, you cannot, um, 
I mean, like they were very like they they understand. They're like you cannot not be yourself. Yeah. You and he goes, oh my god, it's so hard to not be yourself. Yeah. And he did it. And then the one thing is that just like I I tell people, like if you really want to show the NFL, I mean the NFL's got so much to show in mm-hmm. throughout its history. The same for the UFC, but if you really want to show the NFL to the modern fan, it's like, oh, I want to get somebody hooked. You pick up, and you're as a Patriots fan, you relate to this. You get that the champion the the year after the Eagles won the Super Bowl, you get the you get the championship weekend, you get the non call in New Orleans, okay, mm-hmm. and you get the D Ford offside, yeah, and you get those two games, and you get the Rams beating the Saints, and you get the Patriots beating the um, the Chiefs. And you watch those two. Of course, if you show Bills Chiefs from last year, you're fine. People get hooked up in football immediately. But I'm saying if you want those two, you're like, oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Two different games, two different settings. Good. If you really want to watch, uh, get, get a new fan hooked up, and be, like really like hooked into the UFC, show Singapore and show Austin the week after. Yeah, no, those, those two events. Were- what a back-to-back and like underrated card like in Austin, because we're like, oh, it's a yeah. fine night, different day, I mean, different setting. We're like, we're all off the high of Singapore. All right, banger, like seven knockouts or something. I was there, and actually the Spanish broadcast was not there. There was nobody there. And then I get to my table. I was like, where's my table? And they're like, hello? I was in the octagon. I was like right there with the broadcasting crew. So I was like, that was a special moment. Um, great fights, right? And a lot of the fights were finished because people – they a lot of the fighters throughout these interviews, I hear a lot of them saying, "Listen, I'm in, I'm from jujitsu, or, or like, okay, I'm from a jujitsu, but the guy, the guy's got a great striking record, like a knockout record, and someone that's a striker but has these submissions, and like, what's going on?" And they, I've, I've been loving to hear the fighters say, "MMA is a game of opportunity, yeah, and you cannot," and then they have to justify themselves almost to the world. They're like, I was a kickboxing champion. Stop thinking I can't strike. It's just the, the fact that I'm also good at jujitsu, and I'm not going to – if I see an arm, I'll take it. So yeah. I just thought it was amazing because I asked Dean. I was like, okay, you need to correct me if I'm wrong. Like I asked him, like, I don't know, half the, my, the prelim or something. After, like, after four or five knockouts, I was like, all right, correct me if I'm wrong. We went back to that moment with uh, Yuri and, and um, Glover. He said, um, did – is it my impression? But people are just taking the opportunity, regardless. If I didn't know what they were, if I didn't know what these fighters were, as far as what's their big, like their their forte, did we are we witnessing people just going for the kill? Like, yeah. I mean, I see an elbow, I will get that elbow. I see an arm, I'll get that arm. I see. I mean, we had Doc is getting his face broken by yeah. a, a knee, yeah. and I was like, and but I saw other things. I saw people going the extra mile on whatever they were doing and not switching up the game or not be not they were getting themselves out of the way which i thought it was interesting um but i'm always I was, you always gonna root for the for the fighters but if the other guys i mean i've i've I, I, I'll, I'll specifically tell you a story so rafael was uh fighting in dallas right great guy great i mean the fight with drew dober oh rafael alves yeah yes so I mean, Rafael's just one of the greatest storylines you've ever seen. Mm. Just a tough fighter, great guy. Just puts his heart out there. Drew Dober's a class act. Drew Dober's great, yeah, for sure. Great. It's just and first of all, the fight was amazing. For, I mean, the guy looks like freaking Homelander. Like, like, it, and that, the, everybody was like, no one's supposed to have that fine of a jaw and be a fighter at the same time. The the guy, great fight. The fight, I mean, to me, that, that was the fight. And then at, at the end, I love when a fighter pays respects to the other guy for being tough. And then the first thing they said was they got to give it to him or whatever. And I saw him afterwards. I mean, he's always got a, they're, they're great people. They get a lot of shit out of their system. If you really, I yeah. think they, I, I guess they get a lot of, a lot of the anger that we have. They take it out. A lot of the, the adrenaline, the stress. Yeah, that's what um, I realized when I was um I think I told you I was at the Cage Titans event, um mm-hmm. the regional scene. Yeah, noticed, yeah, like, yeah. Because I talked to the fighters at the weigh-ins after that we did, and you know, it yeah. was like talking to a normal person, but then seeing what they look like on their walkout and when they get in the cage and they fight, 
it like they changed something and then i was like man this guy's scary and then i i was I, I went to the after party with them and i was just talking to them like normal people you know it was just crazy it, some of these fighters are just the nicest people one of them, night, give them a little shout out cam arnold um i met his whole family while i was there and they were just super super nice to me just because i interviewed cam and his interview went over like a thousand views, which for me is really good. Okay. And uh, his whole family, you know, they're talking to me about being fans for life and and things like this. It was such a weird thing that you know I didn't expect. Just from I, watching I, the UFC. Yeah, and uh, as far as speaking about families, I mean, I was there when Charles B. Gagey and I, uh, his family came up to me afterwards. Like in the, I was in a bar in Phoenix. It was town was closing pretty early, even though it was you know fifth largest city in America. And we're there in a bar, like a bunch of DSP UFC people just ended up being there. And it was near the hotel. I'm sitting there, and this gentleman comes up to me with the people, and I'm like, Oh, it's just oh, you're a translator. They're Gage's family, man. Yeah. And they came to help to 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 you know pay me some compliments and stuff. And they were the nicest people. We were talking about it because they're from Arizona. So I got a chance to talk to Gage briefly. He was didn't want to bother him. Trying to definitely try not not to bother them. Some of the Brazilians they know me, so uh, they they say, "Hey, what's going on?" Others are more, you know, focused on other things. I do not go to fighters uh, like that. Um, I recently went up to Aljamain Sterling just to let him know one thing. I was like, "I've been seeing you for like two years, and you always have a smile on your face." And a lot of the Brazilians relate to that. It's just it's amazing. You always got a smile on your face, and I just think it's pretty cool. Because like it, he's always on the apex, and I just I just see him. He's got he's got a good presence, you know, like a uh, good vibe. And I just told him at a bar, and uh, he was actually having dinner. And he just sat down and stuff, and he like we were talking different. Same people were talking in the same group. Um, and again, for example, I was with Aldo, right? Translating yeah. for Aldo. Marab is the nicest person ever. <laughs> Marab is the nicest. Mar- hate for the fight. But uh, he fought. He fought. Like, I'm sorry. He fought. He fought. He, and he tried to take him down a thousand times. He tried to use his specialty, whatever. I mean, the, I saw him the week before, and he, and the, 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 the right of security entrance at, at the apex, and he told me that he liked the job that I was doing. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything because of, I mean, I obviously I thanked him for it and stuff. It was totally really cool, but it, he was getting prepared. And I saw him afterwards. We watched the, uh, I watched the, 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 the Leon fight next to him. Oh, wow. Because uh, I had to go back stage because of, I was with uh, Paulo Costa, which, by the way, amazing. Yeah, that fight was amazing as well. I know. And I, I, had, I was with him afterwards because he, he had to take a shower and then go to um, in the doctors and stuff and then go to the media. So I was there with the BT crew behind me, Marab sitting, and Andrew there. And we we're watching. Leon. Leon fight, yeah. Yes, and it was cool because, like, I obviously being octagon side would have been great because I was, but the thing is, I understand the moment I needed to be there. I mean, for work, whatever they call me, it doesn't matter. I've yeah. watched fights in the back. I, I had to watch uh, a Gan and Ganu from different screens because I was following Aldo around in Houston. Um, sorry, uh, Gan and Ganu was uh, Anaheim. Anaheim, the Anaheim. Oh. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, because it, because it, it, because it was Moreno Figueiredo. So yeah. I was with you know. So I've had that happen before. I mean, you get you get to be I mean, there to do a job, right? But it's a, uh, I mean, watching them and you talk to them and they're so nice. Um, um, yeah. I've had some experiences of talking to them. And it's uh, for uh, uh, Chido Vera, yeah, uh, 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 Carlos Puedes, um um uh, santiago ponzinibio i mean it's, it's freaking hilarious um exactly. but that's a spanish broadcast and then uh for example dominic cruz right so uh, i just had this dominic very he's very reserved and he's on his own and stuff and like does and he's very focused and i think he's just a great fighter he's a relentless fighter love the documentaries that they had on him and uriah faber and he was there, and I, I once well, I was I was once talking to him. It, that's the cool part to be able to just ask questions, trying to see the, as the perspective of being who's an outsider, yeah. and get to talk like it was Cruz. Like we just watched Ways get his like third leg lock, 
Yeah. And actually, his coach went like four because he had one in the Ultimate Fighter. So he had four white blocks in the UFC. And I, I'm there with Cruz. Cruz being very nice to me. There are just some people, uh, when they're not doing the they're doing something else a pseudo show where they come in for something like you know what the riot is like the one of the coolest things i've done watch fights next to alan japan and to anthony smith yeah that's, that's because crazy. anthony came down before his fight in dallas like, uh, 276 he was there he was and he yeah. came down and he was with us and I, it's insane because i i'm telling anthony like they Look, it's freaking Lionheart. He's like, yeah. I'm not gonna say nothing. He's like sitting in the back, like he's very humble. He's like, but he's no, he very like, like, like a him. boy, and he's like behind, like sitting, just, just watching. I was like, dude, I, there's, a, I'm only, only one translating. There's another headset here. He's not gonna be used. Sit with us. So he sits between me and Dean. You should see how the guy reacts to the fight. It's his world. Like he's yeah. grabbing us and stuff, and I'm like, oh, because we watch Lawler Barbarana. Yeah. Which was insane. Which, that right? Was by the way, thing. and by the way, right? They're taught uh, Ponzi Nibio is going to fight Barbarena. Yeah. Well, no, so no, that. Now Ponzi Nibio is going to fight Lawler. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Lawler. Uh, yeah. They're talking about Barbarena against. Um, someone says about RDA. Is that right? Um, I think from all I know is uh, about Brian Barbarena because I really like him as well. He's a. Great fighter. Um, yeah, I think um, Brian Battle called him out the Ultimate Fighter winner. Oh, okay, okay, I okay. Uh, I don't know what's. I think Barbarino's also been calling out Nate Diaz. He's just been calling out everyone. I think. But uh, Ponzinibbio's fighting Lawler. Pa- Ponzinibbio's fighting Lawler in December. Lawler, okay, in December. Yeah, I just I got confused because of that fight. Uh, yeah. But it was an amazing fight, and I got to see that with him. So it, it's insane. It's insane yeah. to be yeah. to be able to. Uh, uh, I'm humbled. I, I, the opportunity is something I never thought I was going to have happen. Um, I thank everyone for being so nice because it's a, it's a community that is very selective and they have welcomed me. Um, hopefully what they see and from what I, I can tell people enjoyed the fact that I'm bringing an element of it, which is just, yeah, no, you do a great job with it, and it's to I'm invent- always, it, it, I'm it just there's... when you're there. Oh, you're thank the you. Uh, and, stuff. and it's, it, I mean, uh, contender series really. Contender series is great, yeah. It's, it's, it's first of all, I love the form. I love what happens. Very intimate. Like we made it to Tuesday. Like you, you, you can't believe how, like. Like how gym like it looks. Like in the obviously great production, but it's like it's very, it's like family. Yeah. yeah. Um. But the the stuff that I have that I have witnessed in the past two years, it's just it, it's the this is it, it's on on nitro man. It's I, I mean it's on is is the UFC in, not not per se in steroids, but like it you know it's like on hyperspace. It's every week there's something, and there's all these new fighters coming up. Like okay, think about like this past week contender right yeah you're not gonna tell me that those guys don't have a chance and they go at a, a prelim and a card or something like they're gonna be bangers i mean some of the i mean some of them had one minute complete fights yeah. they did everything like boom 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 what about the fight i mean obviously uh great fight between uh brazilian and japanese right mm. that, that dude is relentless yeah, relentless, and you know the other uh, he can actually trains with Aldo and stuff. He's from Novinia, but then, I mean, how good is that guy from Japan? Like how how good was it? Uh, I went to Penn State, so Bo Nickel. Yeah, bon- like yeah. we're gonna see something. Um, when does when is this fight? Is it this weekend? Is it next Tuesday? Is, is it is already next Tuesday? I'm getting confused. It's, I think it's September. Uh, I mean, we have, yeah, no, it's, it should be September. We have four weeks. We've I have had a six. hard time with watching Contender Series. Obviously, when I was in the U.S. last month, I got to watch it because time difference here. So, like, it will be at, like, 2 a.m. for me. And yeah. I already set up on a Saturday night. I can't set up on a random Tuesday night, especially when I have school the next morning. I know. It's at, so I, I try and my best tough. to catch up with it in the morning. 
I, um, my, my advice to you as someone has, that has endured that in American sports, I have great stories to tell on, on that when Brazil is on three hours with the United States, yeah. uh, during the Brazilian summer, the American winter towards the end of the NFL season, start of the playoffs, uh, the different, the time difference is three hours. Okay. Back in the day, back in the day, Monday night football had a, a week, uh, I mean, now would be week 18, but a, a week 17 and the NFL had a week 18 once before, but teams had like different. Um, but um, the Eagles played the Niners. Mm-hmm. So the Giants win the Super Bowl. Washington wins the Super Bowl. The Cowboys beat the crap out of the Bills. And the next year is the Eagles year. The entire NFC East isn't even going to go. Randall Cunningham broke his tibia and fibula. By the way, Football taught me a lot for MMA because I learned every body part and every yeah. medical report. I, I I was fascinated by it. Like I, this was something way before fantasy football and stuff. Like I, people under, never knew. I was at 15 years old. I knew so many body parts. When I was an exchange student, people thought I was from Canada. They like, "What are you from Brazil? What are you doing? Yeah. Like why do you speak English?" I just got like, believe me, like a medical report for the NFL is an insight into human body. Right? So, um, I remember. He broke his fibula in, in, in tibia against the Jets. They win the game. Eric Allen, 94-yard interception returns, a beautiful thing. But then they go on to a bad season. Yeah. This, is to be, this is to be eight and eight against the Niners. Again, it's a meaningless Monday night game because the, one of the coolest things the NFL has done is actually leave the last game of the last, last week as, you know, they will do as they please and put a Sunday night game, which is a de facto playoff game. This is before NBC. So I'm watching the game. Meaningless. And I hate meaningless games. I don't watch football. For, I like soccer friendly. All right. So I'm watching. Just to be just to be a and a in San Francisco. Game goes to overtime. It goes to the last play of overtime. The Eagles miss a field goal. There's a roughing the kicker. And they kick a field goal again. This was a 34 to 31 to become 8 and 8. This game's ended at 4 something in the morning. Yeah. On a Tuesday in Brazil, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the pinnacle of my sports fandom. And I thought that happened. So World Cup 2002. I'm in Brazil. We're watching the game, right? In Japan and Korea. This year, the World Cup games are gonna be for me two, five, eight, and eleven in the morning. Yeah. So and how good is this gonna be? We're gonna have all that. Get up, UFC. Yeah. And then football. It's like it's it's crazy. But the one thing I've learned, take it from me, an old man, go to bed early, like I did for the World Cup in 2002. Put it like an hour and a half sleep cycles. Yeah. Wake up, watch Contender Series. Yeah. Go back to bed. Go back to bed. Like you just, Contender Series is going to last about an hour and a half of fights. Yeah. It's exactly, you're losing one sleep cycle and I'll go back into bed. And I was like, hey, I did it. I did it for the World Cup. In Japan and Korea, I was going to bed about eight thirty. I, I had to watch all the sports shows, yeah, and the news and like everything that was World Cup related, right? And then I would go, but I, but by nine I was in bed, in the prime of my life, going out all the time. No, no, nope. go to bed at nine. I would wake up for the game, which was at two, mm-hmm. go to bed again, and then the other game was at six. Um, so it depending on the time. But we're, hey, it's gonna be great. Um, plus it's just ten weeks. Uh, what card are you most excited about towards the end of the year? Like UFC pay per view, yeah, or fight night. Um, yeah, I think two eighty. You know, Abu Dhabi. The Abu Dhabi card is it's an incredible card, down to the prelims as well. And I'm Unbelievable! So glad it's early as well. Like the fact that it's early makes it ten times better. Yeah, I mean it's it's and it's crazy. How can you stack? It's almost illegal to stack so many good fights in one card. Yeah. No, I I got, I couldn't believe what they were doing. I could not believe what they were doing. Yeah, I, was, I was looking. I was seeing like two seventy nine wasn't looking too good, and now now they've just put uh Kevin Hall and Daniel Rodriguez, who were two guys I really really love watching. Yeah, so I'm excited to see that. But two eighty, I think, is the card. I'm excited, I'm excited for two eighty one as well. I think uh, the Adesanya Pereira storyline has been a really fun one to watch. Yes, I think it's it's just built into this peak and i'm excited to see i think this is where uh uh israel adesanya's legacy is either is either created more or it just completely falls off you know yeah 
Yeah, it could, it could, it, this could, could be the one slip up for because him to he lose lo- Pereira twice in kickboxing Kumpu. and then Pereira to come into MMA and beat him. I mean, it, it's it's I couldn't couldn't agree more because it, yeah. it, when when something like that happens, it's like it's a, I even go back to football. Like you lose to a team twice in the regular season, you lose to them in the playoffs, like that you're shot. Like they owned you. Yeah, so yeah, I know. Yeah. and then serious, the narrative and and but it wouldn't it be wouldn't be interesting just like. Because we all know that Kumara is gonna come back He's gonna better, right? Like, because it's true. Like, but isn't it interesting how if Adesanya loses, like it, so much, so much is lost. And, and I was watching a video today, yeah. and I didn't realize how much Usman had really lost from the head kick. Not only just the belt, but you know, he was like, oh, the streaks, tying, the tying Anderson, Anderson, Anderson Silva. Silva. Uh, oh yeah, super close to. Getting to George St. Pierre's level yep. and all these different things. And that yes. head kick in the last minute of a fight that he was dominating, except for the first round, changes his whole legacy. You know, that's what people are going to remember for the most part now is him getting knocked out cold by a head kick. And, and, and it is nuts um, that you talk about the streaks. It's just that as Brazilians, everybody was talking about the whole thing with Anderson, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we were, we were watching it closely. I couldn't believe it. I, I that because I because that was in the back of my mind too, um, but I thought of the one thing, and I think it, it it speaks for other sports when people come so close. Yeah. Right. So when you talk about so far, right? Yes. Like you think think about the 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 damage that that twenty to three has done to the, those Falcons oh, players. Yeah. Okay. And actually, it goes back in history that the Oilers never recovered from being up thirty five to three on the Bills. So it, there's, there's a lot. I mean, this whole three-one. I mean, it dismantled a three-one, dismantled the um, the, the 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 Oklahoma City Thunder because they were up three-one on the Warriors before. I mean, they, they, there's there's teams that are come back because they can do it, but it just there's there are others that you know not everyone is the Yankees that are going to lose to the Red Sox and still they they had like a rough patch, like. He, there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh yeah, we have some huge Sox fans. Yeah. Uh, in MMA, I mean, but that I mean, everybody. I mean, that's another documentary that I think Four Days in October is one of the best things I've ever seen. Um, but it, how? But then, again, it's just it's the Yankees and the Red Sox. They're not going to go through a century of, well, not even a couple of decades of failure. They're going to go back. Yeah. They, they're they're good. But some teams are just, and some people. Uh, but I do believe, I mean, Usman just looks on. But what happens with the narrative is, like you said, because a lot of people question things. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. I have no, I mean, I have, I have no say on this. So I was there, and I wanted to know one thing. What did you think of Adesanya Vittori 2? Um, looking back, I haven't rewatched it since it happened, actually. That's the thing. Okay. And it was, it went almost as expected. I expected Adesanya to win that fight. The yeah. way he did, you know, with pretty much, you could say dominant decision, um, but yeah, I I think I saw something you saying it was a crazy experience, right? Yeah. So what what was the craziness? Maybe there's something else in the arena that I missed live. I'm gonna no no to me to me it was crazy because it is? I'll go back and watch it tonight. I'll tell I'll tell you the three things. First of all, it was the first event yeah. in the pandemic with people since the the one in Jacksonville. So that was yeah. okay. Two, um, I mean the one that I saw, the first one that I, it was my first event. It was in a home. It, it was basically a backyard of Brandon Moreno because that's where he used to. He fought so many times there. That's when he won the championship with a again a beautiful choke. And these are the three fights: Nate Diaz against Leon. Yeah, yeah crazy, crazy fun fight. Um, uh, Brandon against Davison. Adesanya Vittori. Okay. Two different fighting styles and stuff. Well, f- first of all, watching Nate Diaz walk out to DMX, DMX had just died. It's just, it was insane. It was, yeah. It was insane because like the, the atmosphere in the building and the fact that like everybody just, I mean, the building smelled very herby. To say the least, 
immediately. They make jokes. I think Fowler was that day. I was like, they say, hmm, that's a great cologne you're wearing there. The broadcast was talking about. The fight was amazing. Um, some fans, and, and you understand this is a Patriots fan because you guys never believed you lost. You always thought they ran out of time. Uh, doesn't it feel like Nate could have just knocked him out? Like if he had one more round. Defense. One more round. If they had, they, they, I when I when the fight ended, I was like, oh my god! If I mean, who am I to say this? But I'm like, it looks like if there was thirty seconds more in this fight, Nate would have won. And that's the thing: would have won on on, on a decision. No, it's like he just he was so close. It's so crazy. Out. The point is iconic now, right? And that's the thing yes. that we're going to hold over Leon. So. Um, then you see the other fight, which is an amazing thing. When Brandon came out, it was like, well, first of all, but it was boo- the booing thing. The antagonistic part was good. Davidson gets booed, obviously, because he's not, he's about to face somebody that's, you know, um, fan favorite, the f- complete fan favorite. I mean, it looks like we're in Mexico. And then I saw Adesanya come out to, uh, somewhere I belong. It was, it was, a it was, a it was a Lim- uh, uh, Lincoln Park, yeah. so it was a, it was just a very good vibe. Yeah, I was a, I, mean, I I have a, I have an attachment to the Transformers from my childhood, even though the movies got increasingly crappier. But uh, just every time I listen to a Lincoln Park, I think of football and the Transformers because they have been very good soundtracks for for both movies. Did you see the thing that they did on Twitter a couple of days ago? It was like yeah, if this movie was made in two thousand and seven. Uh, I, I I didn't see I haven't seen all the Transformer movies. I've seen a few of them. Okay. Well they they they're they again they, they increasingly get worse. Uh yeah, but the that's why I've heard but, uh, I haven't watched them. Uh what's the the first what's the song of the first one? Um the the the, the Lincoln Park actually put out three songs for the first three Transformers movies. Yeah. And uh, they actually put that the song that ends Transformers one. Um mm. uh, so uh, can't remember that I can't remember the Amazon. Uh but the but they put they put scenes from movies from all years like in the past saying what if it was done in two thousand and seven with that yeah. with that song. So it, it it was it was somewhere in Blonde. It was it was just like a good vibe. And then the fight itself, exactly what you expected, just like you said. But the vibe, the vibe, and I think it was a very UFC. It's back. I mean, I, I felt, when I look look back and I was like, oh, um, that I saw it. I saw it coming back and yeah. becoming what it is now. I mean, look at this. How how cool is it going to be in Paris? Oh, it's going to be amazing. I have a few how friends cool going is going? I was tempted to, but then obviously I've been to America the last month, so I don't have much money left to <laughs> to travel to Paris. It's not really that far from me because yeah, where I but... live, I think. I can take a train or drive. Okay, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's the expense of the tickets themselves. And um, I mean, it, it was it, it's gonna be crazy. I think it's it, it, it and especially with how popular Cyril Gan is as well. And I, I mean, Taito Ivasa is one of the biggest stars as well. Yeah, so it's yeah. I need the hometown hero with a fan favorite. It's gonna be, yeah. It's gonna be a fun. Um, I, I love fights on it too. Uh, there are, I, there I, are. I've like, I feel like I, I, I've circled for ages. Is Nathaniel Wood versus Charles Jordan? Okay. Jordan is is a badass. The, yeah, the, Nathaniel say. Wood's last fight. I, I've been a follower of Nathaniel since like his Cage Warriors days. Yeah, um, yeah. So it'd be amazing to see how he looks. Um, obviously his last fight was amazing against Charles Rosa in London. And I mean that was something. And uh, I actually met Rosa because he's a uh, he's training uh, a, a fighter from Peru for yeah. Contender Series. Oh, so he was there. Um, crazy, I mean, crazy situation, right? He doesn't speak Spanish. The other guy didn't speak English. I mean, they, they communicate, but it's so cool. I mean, especially because I mean, I just I, I I saw Rosa. I was like, I'm seeing you. I remember last time you were in a war. Yeah, that was a war. It was, it was, was, a, a, it was a war that he was getting beaten up in. It got. It was like the first round was pretty competitive, and then Nathaniel Wood just took over. Um, and I talked to Nathaniel Wood. If you remember, he was supposed to fight on the first UFC London. Yeah, the the, the, the one that Ukrainian, has been on one, right? Olympic yes, Shanian. yes. And so uh, I interviewed him, and so me and him have had that connection. 
and I was like ready for it. Then his both his fights fall through for that card, so I was really glad to see him go back, go out and look as good as he did. That was really good to see. And the card, I mean, the 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 the, the main thing is that obviously it was that great fight, but the the first London card. Because the Aspinall situation was the uh, it was very anticlimactic, anti but for sure, yeah. it was uh, and I feel bad because I've seen something I saw uh, was it uh, Blakovis the Heat was uh, Rakish, Rakish, right? Yeah, I think, and, well, I and think that, that's different. I saw people comparing. I think the Rakic injury came from Jan checking the leg kicks, but then uh, Aspinall's injury, I think. He said in an interview with Helwani that he had been dealing with a knee injury for a long time. Yeah, so and it was non-contact. Right? I mean, it was matter but of was time it before it popped? And then, um, but it was so quick, right? It was so, quick. Uh, it was so, it was so, so quick. And um, but the 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 one fight that will tell you something like it's, it's a good experience to to tell you what what the what the apex is like. Sometimes it's like wow, like I know that. Yes, if it was a crowd. In a stadium, it would be amazing. But um, I talk about that Sarukian Gamrot fight. Yeah, that was an awesome fight. Uh, it felt like we're in. A... <laughs> it felt like we're we're in a European basketball game. Half of the apex, because then the, inv- the 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 people that are invited, they kind of they put them in different sides, right? Yeah. So one side was a bunch of Armenian flags. The other side is a bunch of uh, um, Polish flags. Yeah. And the fight itself, like Tarukin came out to like this song by the new Armenians, like it just they felt like a war. And I'm like, what? It's a, the party and a war at the same time is one of those contagious music. And then the kicks, every tiny kick camera, I could feel it in my soul. It's like they were like they the people because at what there the sound sometimes it stops, like people, you know, that it, it comes in waves, right? If at any point the, the the crowd of the sound of the crowd didn't match the building, like it would be a moment of silence, and you would hear a kick, and it's like, oh my god, this is nasty, oh, sure. nasty. Was, and like being there uh, at Memorial Hall for Cage Titans, like that was my first time yeah. seeing the fights in person. Yeah. And um, I remember I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, but there was a guy who got his arm broken in a Kimura. Yes. And- <laughs> I was there. I was literally like uh, on the other side of the hall. I was standing there because for some fights, I couldn't get out of the media room interviewing fighters. Yes, it like, happens. Fighter wins and it would just be like a circle. I got out because the interview finished and I was watching and I was talking to one of the journalists and we're like, oh, Kimura, right? Because we're like, okay, this fight's going to end. And then we hear the snap of the. Ah! It was the. It reminded me of Munoz Jacare. It was this. It was the humorous bone. Ooh. It was two amateurs, guys making their amateur debut, so they're not getting paid well at all. And hearing the snap, like the whole crowd just like was like, "Oh my god!" You could, and then someone in the front row passed out. Uh. Like, so the medical attention came to the guy who broke his arm. Then they had to check the guy who passed out. So there was like a forty-minute intermission. So because they had to calm the guy down, get him out, and. No, I know, I know. I, the kid I, 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 arm was really nice kid, really talented kid. Uh, yeah. We t- he had graduated high school like two months prior to the fight. Oh, that's how young he is. And he said he was super happy to win a fight, but not necessarily the way he wanted to go viral. Right? You know, yeah. it went viral of him breaking another guy's arm. That's not the way you want to make your statement. And what is the recovery time on the guy that got um, his arm broke? So they've actually had to start a GoFundMe for him. And that's the craziest thing. Um, but it's going to be a long road to recovery because, I mean, it's the arm snapped in half. It was like a clean breakthrough. Mm. Um, it's yeah. nasty. I felt bad for the guy. Um, I think uh, the way they're saying it is like a, the GoFundMe says a long road to recovery. Yeah. So I don't know, you know. Also, I don't know if he's going to come back. If that was me making my amateur debut and I got my arm snapped in half, I don't think I'd want to fight again. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, again, like it, yeah, it, you're, you're, you're right completely. completely. I mean, it's trauma to the, uh, especially when you just, you got to that point as your debut, as you said, and I was like, oh my God. So, um, and I hopefully, 
uh, they get he gets the medical expenses covered that the go for me goes well and then he has a, a speedy two thousand i think he's got two thousand dollars raised for him already which okay. is really good okay but yeah. uh it was it was i felt so bad for the guy in the octagon and like um and like i opened twitter like 20 minutes later Mm-hmm. While I was at the event, it was the first like five things I see are just this arm thing because I saw it from where I was stood, but I didn't see it on the big TV yet. Yeah. And then seeing it from like a proper like camera angle was us. You could see the whole arm go, and it was awful. Oh, so that- I saw that. I mean, when I saw, obviously, I didn't want to see. It was very grueling, so I just saw the the scent, the thing. And actually, I think somebody warned because of the sound. Yeah, and I didn't want to like even open up with sound. I was like, okay, so let me just see. So I kind of saw what happened. I was like, oh my god! And um, you always get worried because you want. And I think it's a very cool thing when when fighters are able to, you know, they can they they can control the bodies and they, they don't yeah. allow things oh, to happen. Fight, it was amazing, especially for a guy who's making his amateur debut. The guy who won, yeah, the first round he picked the guy up and he and he walked him to his corner and slammed him back down. So he could do his grappling in front of the corner. And er, late in the first round, he had a really tight arm bar as well. But he said he could hear starting to starting to pop as well. Oh, wow. So it was ah. like, it felt like an impending doom that the arm would go. Yes. It, well, yeah. I'm probably like a little accident waiting to happen kind of yeah. situation. I'm like, that's crazy. But, um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I, thankfully I haven't seen, I mean, I've seen some things, um, and and Jesse broke her arm, um, oh, yeah. but oh, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. And funny, I actually saw her here. Uh, next, I was I live in downtown Vegas, and the following day I go to brunch, and she's there, there holding her arm with her team. Um, I got an opportunity to quickly ask what she was doing, and um, I, I just you know, I, it's good when they are able to stop. Uh, I think that the refs play a very, very important part in it as well, and I, I think a lot of fighters have been really cool about this. That like you know, I, I knew that this is the next and. The fighters themselves that are going through this are like, this. it's my career. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap. It. I'm gonna yeah. tap because, but um, I think we have a great year, great rest of the year. Oh, great rest uh, of the year for sure. Great rest of the year. Um, curious about, you know, what's gonna happen towards the end of the year. I was gonna fight in Vegas at the end towards the end of the year. I think. Um, um I don't know. I heard rumors of John Jones fighting in November. I don't think that's gonna happen now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every December, he I think he tweeted the number for the card. I think he said two eighty two, but who knows? You know, I feel like John Jones's uh, return has been like I'm kind of at a point where it's like I don't I don't really mind. You know, like if he doesn't come back, okay, but if he does come back, that's great. You know what I mean? I it'd be I mean it'd be an amazing. It would be oh the build up to that once the build I mean I can't yeah yeah well, like a tour I, I want it to be next year I want them to do like a proper tour for it you know with Miocic and John Jones I feel like that would be a really fun like a media tour yeah yeah bring it back I mean really, that's really garner the hype for it yeah um uh, be a great ending to a year that's gonna be and then sets up a twenty uh, a twenty twenty three that's uh the thirty years of the UFC. 30 years of the UFC. It's going to be amazing. Now, yes. um, before we go, I wanted okay. to um, give you one last thing. I want to say, if, do you have any advice for like a young person trying to get into sport? Not just me, obviously. I'm young as well, but for anyone trying to be a fighter, a journalist, or maybe even a translator like you, what what advice would you give to a young person? I wish I... I... <laughs> I there's different facets, right? You're talking about I mean, the translator piece is one thing, the the media piece is one thing, the the fighting thing is one thing. It's just you know try to surround yourself with people that will give you, that will see you for where you are, that will help you, that understand that you can do the job that that you they really want to do. Just People that are positive. I, I, I underestimated the importance of positivity. Um, there are many times in my life. I think is uh, I've always say more yes to things. Say yes. Um, I've of the best experiences I've had in my life I had to do a, a yes. Uh, hey, will you do this? Yeah, why not? Uh, you never know. 
you never know. I thought it was a, a really good comment. I'm, I like to tell you about my experience. And I, I thought it was a really good comment. I saw um, someone send it to me that in, in a YouTube video once, one guy actually put, like, this guy is an example of this person that could be called in for a job and thought just, you know, I'm going to do my job. And he decided just to take the make the best out of the opportunity to introduce new new things and just do different things and just to kind of keep getting better at it, which I thought it was really cool because you, you always want to hear you're doing that. Positive reinforcement, something we, we always, in our lives, we all want to be recognized for something, regardless, whether it's just a day, a week, a moment, a job, a paper, whatever it is, you know, an effort, whatever it is. Um, there are fighters that got in touch with me thinking that I might have a connection with people. I don't have a straight up connection with people. I would never use that kind of privilege to actually you know, provide access to them. Um, and I just kind of told them what I knew. Like, oh, listen, you have to look into, why don't you look into gyms that have taken people to container series? Why don't you look into gyms that, that have a, a tradition of, you know, having different kinds of specialties there and then you can become a better all-around person because i'm just bringing the corporate experience to people like i think i mean you don't have anything more complete than mma in sports because no other sport there's no of course you can do a lot of things on a soccer field but at the end of the day you're not going to be a goalie um and you're not going to you might defend a little bit but you need to strike i don't i mean you you're not as complete and then you need to be complete because if you're not complete someone else is going to give you something that's going to make you have to be complete at least as far as a on your defense you might not be a someone that's going to really be a, a guy for submissions like you're not you're not going to get them like you might if you if you, if you do it's going to be like once in a blue moon or if you're you might not be a, a knockout artist. but you're going to have to know how to defend strikes and defend when you're and when you when you when all the chips are down and you're out there in a grand and somewhere again they mention you you're taking down in front of the other corner and the other co there's a strong guy that knows what he's doing or knows what she's doing and the coach is right there giving instructions and you're there what do you do if you can defend yourself right so you're gonna have to be complete somehow somewhere so try to do as much as possible to work on your weaknesses Perfect. Um, because you never know the day that you're going to be I mean, faced with the adversary. Like, okay, this is my weakness. I need to, I need to understand how do I deal with this? A lot of people never get to um, put their strengths into, into action because of the fact that they're paralyzed by the one time that their weakness got them. So, I mean, um, and, uh, Another thing that, that I hear, which is really cool, I mean, you always want to hear that when people say, be more you, like continue you know, keep doing what you're doing. I've, I've, I've tried, I've tried different things. I, I, uh, if you try for, for the sake of doing something different, I understand. Yeah. But always try to do things with the purpose of, okay, I'm getting this experience, but this is not, you know, try to go back to who you are. We all are people. Um, and not in the sense, again, not because of novelty, because I like novelty. And I like different things. But just, the, you know, in novelty, find out who you are. Like, if that's what, if this is what you like to do, uh, um, go for that. Um, um, you have to leave your comfort zone. Yeah. But there's no problem of being yourself in that comfort zone. Like, there's no problem. You might find out that the person that you are outside of your comfort zone can try. So um, I've failed many times with different things. <laughs> I've done so many different things. But uh, saying yes really helped. Like, I've had wonderful opportunities because when I was invited to do something, they're like, why don't you take up one? Yeah. Go. I mean, as long as it's a safe situation. I mean, if you're in personal life, we have to worry about that as well. But as long as it's something that's can, that can, you can bring some, not sometimes don't worry about you know the the compensation for something that you're doing in the, towards the start of it, um, how the logistics are going to work on certain things. Just try to see because you never know 
approach people. Um, it really helps when everyone's so nice, like at the UFC, but I always try to connect with people. Yeah. That's at the end of the day. And um, I've heard this um, a while ago, and I think it holds true to this day. It really doesn't matter who you know. It matters who knows you. Yeah. And um, it's, I've, in order to make connections with people, I have just basically opened up my weaknesses <laughs> as much as possible. And, and what I try to do there when you see me trying to, you know, guard down. Some people have asked me, how do you go from a high of watching a fight or something and all of a sudden you go into an interview a fighter that's in the, not only one that could have lost or that just, that just lost in front of you or also a fighter just elated and talks about a loved one that was lost. How do you bring that energy down? I don't have as much, much empathy. I really internalize what I'm talking about. I really try to like it. Sometimes you feel it, right? Pay attention to it. We we are not paying attention to people enough. We're paying attention to screens. We're paying attention to other things. We, yeah. But um, it's good to pay attention. Everything we we've all went through the past couple of years. I think we should turn more into people. So you know, to get to be tuned into people, see what they need. You never know if you could be. A, I mean, for a, for a fighter, get into a situation where you can just, you know, get better at it. Yeah. Um, fighting with different people, different styles, you might learn something different. Training philosophy. If you're, I mean, if you're in sports media, I've everybody. I'm telling you from all the people that I have made my dream come true for them, which was they work with sports media today. And I hear everything. They've covered everything. They've covered. They didn't say no. They're like, they've covered everything. This guy. And it's so cool when you hear that a person, like it's sometimes you never know because the person has covered something so completely different for years. And all of a sudden you find out that this reporter has always been like, her passion has been baseball or this guy's passion has always been whatever. Like, I mean, whether it's football or like WWE. And when they, when you, when they tweet, they're like, oh, I'm finally going back to my passion. I'm like, oh my God, you've worked for 25 years. And you finally get to do that. And as far as the translating is concerned, um, it, it's um, I've done a lot of translations for a lot of different things. Um, I've always wanted to translate content. I've always wanted to. I've always asked if I mean, from going up to people on the street that were lost, <laughs> theme park, even in my city. But I've always tried to see. Um, if I could be uh, of help, yeah, that's the lesson I learned at Disney too. You never, you don't know, but I'll get you to somebody that does know, and that helps you navigate. So, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. I know it's a, I didn't, I didn't condense the answer too much, but just uh, it, that's what I. I'm just telling you what I've seen. Yeah. I mean, I, it'll be it'll be disingenuous of me to actually provide advice to people that I, there there are people that are way younger. Than that I am and they have accomplished so much more in fields that I've always loved. So I just try to listen to all of them. And do not and do not be prejudiced against people that are young, way younger than you, that work in different ways than you. Because that's how you grow, right? Yeah, exactly. That's how you grow. I mean, you never know. You have a lot of advice to give me from doing things that I have never done. So you, everyone's an expert at something. Exactly. Right. And, and I thank you. I do appreciate you wanting to talk to me. I'm, I'm still baffled and it's just surreal that people are interested in this story. And I just think it's so cool no, to be able to tell. interesting. I've always been a guy who's um, naturally been better at languages than like math or science. So Yeah, I, I know the feeling. I know the right. feeling. Like when in my exams and stuff, um, so I'm doing the A-level program now. Yeah. And I'm taking English, German, and media. I'm not taking science or math because I realize yeah. these are my strong suits. Yeah. I'm I'm a language person more than a number and stat person. 
and and there will be tools uh um, um every time i see like i like statistics for example if i, I because i just i think it applies the concept of social uh, of sociology psychology politics into into things and business and that's how i read i like the visual help i like i, I like to that i like to tell a story to myself when i read numbers yeah. um but it, there's a way for us to use our strengths to do something else yeah. uh so yeah um I'm, I'm glad that you you know you found a way to be more you yeah believe me it's a lot of people in this life down the road they're frustrated because they were not themselves before mm-hmm. the more the earlier you admit to yourself who you are and how can you improve upon the person that you are but being yourself and doing what you like and it's not this is like oh do what you love like it's just passion don't work no you're hey you're going to school you're doing your things. You're gonna to have to make ends meet. Like you, you pay the bills, but um, you own your own time. Yeah. You know, you do with your free time. You don't need to read seven business books a week. You know what I'm saying? Just like do, just try to understand what you like, and you know, give yourself some time. But I'm glad that you did it. It's. Uh, I wish I had that choice in the start. Um, but don't for, man, don't forget that math one day. Pff, yeah, no. I mean, it comes back to freaking haunt you. I'm like looking at this some screens. I'm like, all right, let me tell this story to myself once again. Yeah. Um, but hey, wish you the best. Thank and you, you know. yeah, we, and then uh, football season's upon us. Football so we're gonna have to. Us, yeah. <laughs> yes, no, I don't. Just can't I'm can't sure wait. We'll be talking lots about football and. Yeah, I got to see. I mean, I got to to, to witness a, a Penn State road thrilling opener on a thursday night so i got to watch it with undivided attention i know that Pitt west virginia was actually a pretty good game but i was like okay i can watch my school and then and i have to worry because i have a red zone problem i yeah. really have a red zone problem. I, I cannot whenever all the games are the going NFL red zone? i watched the red zone from like the day one uh, from the days of direct tv i've i've been watching red zone from yeah, day that, one that's how i watch football as well it's 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 beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful and the then i as well he's so good at it scott it, it, Hanson is amazing, and uh, story I got to meet of Dan Heli does uh, contender series, right? Yeah, so I told people like there, I was like, and I told him like recently, I was like, so that you know, I understand that I'm surrounded by some people that have been in there. I mean, think about like, everything that Cormy has been through, Bisping was amazing, by the way, and you know, Megan, and, and, and they could the, the, see Laura's work be growing to what she'd become. And I went up to Dan. And I was like, "But you know what, man? I'm a football guy through and through, and you're the person that I wanted to meet because to me, you when you work for NFL Network and you have NFL Now when it came out, like it was you, like to me, like you were like one of the voices of the league." And he's like, "Oh my god!" And he's a Washington fan too. Uh, and uh, the the cool thing is that he told me that he did. Uh, what well, he 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 subbed in for. Uh, for handsome ones yeah. so he did so he did it right and i did ask him about the p because you know hansen said that after i don't know eight years of red zone he peed for the first time yeah so i asked dan i was like no i had to man i don't know how it's gone done it's so it's so surreal i said this, this is my best job in sports man. best job. i mean can you can you you you, you own that room that's yours yeah. you're the guy who's taking us to all the games red zone's amazing i love red zone and I look at the games, like the primetime games, as an opportunity to kind of sit down and chill and watch our games. It's like, yeah, but like a red zone is just like a thing. Nothing is better. And when I say, man, nothing, no, nothing is better than when you can go back from the octagon to the octobox. Exactly. And that's it. So that's a perfect way to say it. Saturday to Sunday, it's upon us, man. Thanks for the talk. No problem.